Done in the workshop, quick mailbag tonight. Let's take a look. First out of the box. These are, I believe, yeah, uh, pin removal tools. Um, for those round style pins in certain connectors, you need to use one of these to shove down over it to release the pin so that you can remove it. Comes with various sizes, just cheap stuff from China. We'll give it a go. It's not very often that I need them, but sometimes, sometimes just having a hollow end is handy for different things. So yeah, we'll give them a go. Next up, uh, nothing to see here really. Uh, these are run cam uh, camera or battery straps. These hold my run cams down to my quadcopters. Handy to have. Ah, this one I've been waiting for. Check this out. These are tritium light emitting <laughs> radioactive little vial. It's a, a tritium gas with a in probably a borosilic glass tube and used to just to emit light. Let's see if we can see that. With the lights off, you can see these are emitting some light. I have a a video already on the channel where I tested the radioactivity of these with my dosimeter, uh, this guy right here, and uh, did some neat testing. I'll link the video down below maybe, but I have a fun little project for this and I'm glad these came in. Uh, very expensive for what you get, but uh, should be fun. No, they're not dangerous. I do have some radioactive stuff around here though. Big thanks to PCBWay for supporting these videos, supporting makers, and making awesome circuit boards available so we can make our projects really, really well done. Check out their assembly services as well if you'd like them to completely build your project from start to finish. <laughs> oh, we got another one of these uh, Retro FC Plus 160 in one Game Boy. Looks like this one came through kind of whitish in color, like Game Boy color. Um, not sure. I wonder if it has... It does have a charge. Uh, ah, there we go. Get rid of that audio. These are just a, a nifty little Game Boy that has a whole bunch of games on board that you can play. And they work they work actually fantastic. I, I haven't done a review on the channel yet. I will at some point. But I'm, I'm super happy with these. They, they work way better than expected. I've got several of them, including um, uh, a clone of a Game Boy that actually takes Game Boy games, which is super cool. So if you're interested in retro gaming or whatever, throw a comment down below. Okay, this one is kind of a big mess. This was marketed as a, a cell phone repair kit. I have no idea why I thought I needed another one, because I've got a whole drawer of this stuff. But I like the metal spudgers that come with it. These are these are really good. These feel real nice, real stiff. And then I like this little guy here for doing the screen removals and stuff. Interesting. We'll give it a go. And then another piece for pulling screens off. And then the different plastic spudgers and it's just a cheap kit. This is nothing special, but we'll give it a go. Next up, we got, what is this? This looks like a, a voice module, a recorder module. It is. It's a recorder module with speaker. So it's a standalone little microcontroller that records and plays back audio. So you can record different things on there and then you can activate it from your Arduino to play back d using the I.O. here. So handy dandy. I think that'll be a fun little thing to play with. Along those lines, I believe this is similar. Yes, these are actually MP3 players. Now that is an MP3 player on a chip solution basically and is breadboard friendly by the looks of it looks like it should line up to any breadboard and takes a micro SD card and then we can use a microcontroller to tell this 
playback, whatever, track from the card, which is really handy when you want um, to have like different sound effects or whatever, say from a robot or whatever, but or or just a user interface that you want specific sounds to be played. I think we can make this work. Um, I'm pretty sure that's an amplifier chip on there too, so I think you can hook this direct to a speaker, but I could be wrong on that. I have to go back and check the specs. But uh, got a couple of them. Maybe this winter we'll uh, we'll make some time and have a play with those. Okay, one more thing. We've got some new batteries. Ovonic FPV. These are the cheapest 1300 four cell LiPo I could buy off of Amazon. And what I'm told or what I've read and heard is these are actually uh, made by Tattoo, which is the, the brand that I use uh, and fly with, which is quite, quite a bit more expensive battery. These are ridiculously cheap. Under, uh, I think it was 27 Canadian dollars uh, on Amazon, which is it's a crazy deal for us Canadians. Like, labels are crazy expensive. This is one of the most expensive parts of the FPV hobby. So we're going to give them a go. I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to test them out like Joshua Bardwell style or anything. I'm just going to take them out and fly them and see if my quads... Actually, let's go do it right now. Let's go take these things out. I'm going to charge them up. Let's take it out. Maybe uh, just punch the, punch the quads out and see. Do they fall on their face? Do they puff up? Do they work? Yeah, let's find out. Pretty cool. Okie dokie, we're set up. Give these batteries a try. I'm not sure uh, how they're gonna go, but I think they'll be fine. Something weird going on. We got helicopters over here and I can hear sirens, town police sirens in the distance. Weird. He's way far away. I'm, I should be safe. <laughs> All right, first time. I didn't even start this camera. So I took the, the Blue Falcon up uh, I performed quite badly, actually. There's still some things wrong with the quad that needs sorting out. So this is the X215 Pro. We're going to give that a go instead and see how it works. I'll go home and I'll sort out that. The issues with the other one later, uh, one of them was uh, the uh, my VTX antenna was left loose uh, on the quad. I, I don't even know how I missed that. These are the stupid things. Before pre-flight, flight, you should always check everything. Or a pre-flight, you should check everything on your quads. Do as I say, not as I do. And why? Okay. We're good there. We've got transmitter on the right model. We've got goggles running. Let's plug this fancy battery in and let's give it a go up in the sky and see what it does. With any luck, it'll fly good. We don't have any of the problems with the other quad. This quad seldom disappoints me. This thing's just been a rock star, actually. Good video, good performance. It just, it just works. Okay, ready? Let's go! <laughs> Zoom! <laughs> oh, I love this thing. We should have onboard video recording with the run cam. My video on my goggles is not great. That's weird. I'm actually I can't win for video today. Uh, it's very contrasty weird with that camera today. It is a, a cheap clone of a Swift, I think, so I've been meaning to swap it out. Maybe we'll do that. Down the river a bit. Good signal. 
for us. Yeah. So, to test this, we should really just beat the living bejesus out of this battery, but I don't think I'm going to do that today. Seems to be working good. Road a bit. See if we can drop out of the sky, do the low RSSI. Lost the video completely though. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad spot. I should have just turned my head. The quad was basically behind my goggles almost. It was off to the side. Instead I just punched it up into the sky and that got me my video back. pretty good so I'm not getting battery low on these big punch outs at all like I do with my old uh, my old tattoo batteries that are just toast so overall like that's 60 amps solid no problems We're good. I don't know whether my current sensor is calibrated correctly on this quad. Should check that. Maybe I can do this video. That's my three minute mark and we're we're only less than halfway utilized according to the according to the counter, so smooth flying quad. Yep, I think that's good enough. Cheers, guys. Good luck in all your projects. I'll see you next video.